Hello everybody and welcome back to MJ Games. I am Michael and today we're looking at an absolutely beautiful park called Park Ciblu or Ciblu by Jan BK1608 and I, I am just extremely excited to take a look at this park because my goodness this is one of the most beautiful parks that I have seen built yet and I believe this is this creator's first park now I might be wrong about that um, but this is at least the first one that I've seen and this is just absolutely spectacular and the description as it's a long one says welcome to Park Said Blue um, Planet Coaster's first eco-friendly resort. Built from a domain in northern France, its owners sought to help the Yonko company to transform the place into a theme park that would take its guests into various landscapes and cultures of France while also preserving natural spaces around the domain. This park is accessible to English speakers yet contains occasional French names, words, or sentences and its less crucial details. This project was designed with guest perspective in mind and can be experienced at any time. Only main the only the main attraction, the convergence, needs to be experienced at night from queue to exit. You should only go through open doors. Closed doors do not have interiors. Thanks for being curious enough to visit the first piece of my heart I share with you. Take care, dream big, Jan. So let's get started with the tour. Now here we are at Park Ciblu. Or Park Cible. Gosh, I'm totally I'm gonna totally butcher a lot of the wording in here. Um, and probably worse than Maddie did. Um, but I love the little entrances here right at the gate. Just kind of, and I mean, the, all the extra sounds and stuff are just so amazing that we're hearing. I'm not going to have to add any music whatsoever to this video. This is awesome. But I love the little entrance gate. You got the information boost. There's a couple ways for him to walk around. And really good job. And look at the coloring here. Um, you know, American American colors as well along with French colors, so I like it. Now it says, special thanks to Iron Maddie, who helped him discover the community, to your dad, awesome, um, Roller Coaster Tycoon, nice, four years old, awesome, Frontier for making this amazing game, of course, you gotta thank Frontier, Moomin, um, yeah, I mean, Moomin's helped a lot of people, I think, with their building style. So what do we have here? Oh, it's like a mini little backstage. Oh, wow. And then to get to this other side. So it's it's just a little access place for, get, for employees. Maybe the only thing I would do is add a little rope right there so that not just anybody can walk across, you know? That's maybe my one suggestion. Oh, we got some more honorable mentions over here. We got... Oh, to you. Thanks for being curious enough to give this park a chance. To your mom. Awesome. I think dad. You got to thank mom as well, right? Um, appreciate the simpler things in life. The Iron Gamers. So Iron Maddie's channel. And Albris and Warren G. For being the ones I look up to in the community. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, Albris and Warren G. Are just, I mean, just unbelievable with their builds. Insane. So right here we got the entrance, and we'll do an overview kind of at certain points where we kind of look at an aerial view. But I really wanted us to experience this in flip cam because this is maybe the most immersive park. Um, just right away, this view is just insane. Everywhere you look, there's nice trees. You see pathing over there. Um, Callie, which way? Which way to go? Let's go left this time. So we got, golly, there's so many different walkways. Let's so know I'm going to miss something. Chemin de France. Like I said, I'm going to butcher pronouncing this. And I really apologize. Bord de Rive. There we are. Now, I, ha I, I have been to France once in my life, and it was only for seven hours. <laughs> so the quick story behind that is... My first year out of college, my dad wanted to, because he's gone overseas a fair amount and travels a lot for business, a lot of frequent flyer mileage and stuff. And so he wanted to take his family on an overseas trip around Christmas time. So we went to London for a couple days, went to, stayed in Ghent, Belgium for a couple days, which Ghent was beautiful. 
And when we were taking the train from London to Belgium, my dad, who goes overseas a lot, so he normally doesn't make mistakes. Like they're, they like renting cars and driving on the countryside and stuff. Um, um, he and my stepmom, but they, uh, my dad accidentally booked a train to France. <laughs> so he had a seven hour layover, I guess you could say in France before hopping on the other train to get to Belgium. And so we were just in Paris and it was really cool, but it was so crowded. Like it was insanely crowded. Um, and then sure enough, my dad be my dad left uh, both of our, uh, <laughs> international phones in the backpack, in the locker at the train station. So when we were taking the bus or we're taking a taxi from, um, Notre Dame to the Trump de Louvre, I think it was called, or I forget what it's called the big, the big roundabout. And we had to take two separate taxis because of the amount of people we had in, once we got there, I was like, oh my gosh, how are we going to find everybody? Sure enough, within about a minute, we found them. There had to be thousands of people there. Um, but enough of the story time. I love this little area over here. So these would be like the um, some maintenance cars and stuff. And how they're dressed, to me, makes it seem like this is maybe for the nature part of the park. Um, and so, oh, backstage tour. Awesome. So you got somebody down here kind of working at something. What am I... Shouldn't have done. I'm trying to find this for Jasmine. Because Jasmine has been wondering, so we can kind of see an overview of what we looked at so far. Jasmine's been wondering what animatronic this is. Film crew, male fiddle. Okay. Gotta, I gotta know that for if Jasmine asks for it again. Um, so let's, uh, we'll get back into flip cam in a second. But this is the Yon Company. Yonko Company, so they're the company that owns the park, it looks like. And then we've got this nature trail. You know, we're going to have to do this at the end. We're going to look at the park first, and then we'll come back and look at that, because that's looks awesome. So, ready your QR. Is that supposed to say camera? But yeah, really cool, and I love the views right here of the wooden coaster. I think it gives great views. And this is a nice way to have a little canopy. Um, that's just three pieces. Just the decorative post. And then, or maybe that's four, because that might have be doubled over. Yeah, it's doubled over. So this is just the um, Renaissance awning doubled over. And that's a really cool tip that I'm going to use in my park at some point. But love the view that that gets. Gosh, your foliage work is just incredible. So let's get the HUD back off the screen. There we go. Nice walkway using these pieces in game and dec decorating it up a little bit with that kind of ivy flowers. And you've done a really good job of mixing up the trees, mixing up your plants, and then mixing up the building styles. Plus we got are those butterflies. Yeah, the butterflies going around. Golly, I should have I should have asked Jasmine to do this park with me. She would she would love this. So we got Professor Worst, and I like how you colored the building, basically the colors of the actual, um, the actual, um, you know what I'm talking about, the, the company. Same thing here. Well, Street Fox Coffee, I guess that's pink instead of red. But then we got Ibox Sightings, or Ibex. So I guess that's the, I think that's the name of an animal, right? If I remember correctly. So you get your digital picture. So that's... That's what you walk through after the coaster. So here is the ride sign about how tall you have to be. Is that kid tall enough? Ooh, they just meet the height. Look at that. But then right here, I mean, look at the view. That is a great view. Now I will say the shaping on that first drop's a little bit off. Um, so I remember on Maddie's video, I didn't watch all of it because I wanted to kind of have some first reactions when I walked through this park. Um, but I remember you saying something about, in the comments about the coaster, about stuff just not quite working out or something. Um, but we'll see. So Ibex. Oh, this is a nice covering. Using rocks and, and then just plugging in those, or using some foliage plugged in. This is really cool. So the eco cue. <laughs> And then, oh, nice, you're using that as protective covering. Good job. So 
So now we got the sled boarding, okay. Look at this station, my goodness. I like how you got the numbers right there. So let's go ahead and pause that real quick so we can look at these stats and take a ride on the coaster. So iBox sledding, 42% safe. Do not pull on the iBex's tail. <laughs> um, so this would go out to the maintenance shed right here, a little backstage, which is nice. Only thing I would say is I feel like, I don't know how you would do it, but I feel like this covering needs to go over a little bit more so then you can get rid of the post because you can't exactly slide it over with the post in the middle in theory so like the um in terms of actually if this were a true transfer track how it would actually work right so essentially these would just simply slide over but unless if you're sliding the entire roof paneling along with it now that would work as well and it looks like actually you know what with how you've got this set up it looks like how that's maybe supposed to so it's supposed to work. So really, really uh, interesting and good way to kind of make use of a transfer track. As we can see, it looks like some nice, looks like a nice wooden coaster. And so one other thing to look at in here before we go is the control room. So really good job, you know, just putting a lot of detail in here. I like that roof awning you used right there to make it feel like it's still outside when it's not. So hold on to your horns, or hold on to your horns, yeah. The Ibex is not really meant to pull a sled. <laughs> All right. So let's actually look at these stats before we go on this coaster. And by the way, can I say I love the roof here, those um, kind of make trying to give it like that solar um, type look. So if we look at the stats, you've got, let me go ahead and play it. So... Um, lateral g-forces are a little bit high, but everything else looks good, so I'll talk to you after the coaster. So that is a really, really cool coaster. And now there are a couple moments that I think it could have had more, um, more of a more banking added to it. Or like I said, this kind of first drop right here, um, you know, needs a little bit better shaping. But overall, I think the layout's awesome. The concept and idea of it's great. I actually don't mind this little turn here at the end, at the bottom. Um, I don't think that was bad at all then you overbank that part which was nice so there are just a couple parts throughout it that probably could have used a little bit more banking like right here um, but overall i thought it was fantastic absolutely fantastic and as we kind of look at the outer edge of this portion i mean you got like hay bells out here so it really feels like it's in a field which is really really cool um so i wonder what these were for Oh, this is the last hidden piece of the park. The crow... Oh, sorry. This last hidden crow is the last piece I've placed in this park. This is my favorite view in the whole park. Take a few seconds to take it all in. So peaceful. Thanks for spending a bit of your time with me, friend. It means the world to me. Yeah, I mean, look at... That is just a beautiful view. Wow. Wow. Really, really well done. And I love the added in noises. That's one thing that I honestly have done a terrible job at doing. 
that I'm going to do better on this next park that Jasmine and I are working on is implementing sounds and music and stuff like that. Um, we'll get back in plip cam mode, but after we ride that small junior coaster there, just so we can kind of see an aerial view of this, looks really good. Now let's see, how did... Oh, that, that's the whole piece that came with the game. Okay. The bandstand. Um, so now if we head back and look this way... So this was kind of where we walked through it first, and I was like, oh my gosh, there's so many different ways. Um, okay. So it's, I think, the different names of the rides and stuff. So once again, another little tiny place to get backstage. Like I said, I would just place a couple posts with a rope. Um, I just think that'd be a way of kind of sectioning it off as saying, hey, guests don't come back here only for staff. Actually, you know what? I think the... Kids coaster is or not. Oh, the kids coaster is this way. Okay. You know, let's hop back in Plipkin mode. I don't I don't wanna miss anything. I don't wanna miss a thing. Cause I can't sing. There we go. All right, now we're back in plip cam mode to really experience this park. So once again, I love these awnings you used. Every queue, every path has got just really good views, really well done. Absolutely love it. No, did I get stuck? Now let's click on somebody else to get back in plip cam mode. <laughs> There we go. Sorry about that. Once again, as I said before, I think really well done with these flowers, kind of using the colors to represent France. And look at this building. Wow, that is really cool. 1828, it looks like. So that's when this would have been built. In 1828. And that's the ride that we need to experience everything at night. Then we got a nice carousel here. Got a nice little uh, um, bench or uh, wow swings right there. Golly, I can't I can't think today. This is actually the third park tour of me filming today. So, <laughs> um, really cool how you've hidden that in kind of the little tent. That's a cool little trick. So that's actually the exit. Here is the entrance, and let's walk up the cube. Let's walk out of the path a little bit just because I don't want to be constantly walking through people. And I love the touches of realism here with the chain link fence. Really cool. Oh, that's a cool tunnel. I need to make something like this sometime. That is really cool. Because it's really pretty basic. Like, that is really cool. So we're going up to EcoQ once again. Really cool way of having the protective fencing. And very similar to control room to the previous one it might actually be the exact same and this is really really cool really well done so let's actually go ahead and take a ride on this coaster So that was a really good junior coaster. Um, I was actually kind of surprised it went uh, around twice for how long the initial layout was. It wasn't that it was super long, but it had definitely had a lot of, um, it was definitely longer. So this is the a passage. 
But I think this is probably for s staff, maybe? I don't know. I guess we'll see. We'll find out. Now I'm going to turn it to nighttime because it said this is the one ride that everything must be experienced at night. So this is called the Convergence. What's well, not allowed? Bars? Ba oh, bags. Sometimes the lettering, I'm like, Whoa, what letter is that they're using? So I like the fact right away that the exit of the building is going to go right into essentially where the queue is, if I'm looking at this correctly. So there is the queue. Okay, I guess not necessarily the exit. Some people might just be walking up there and then not do anything. So it looks like the queue starts here. Yeah, because they just turned around like they didn't want to go on the ride. This is cool. Oh my gosh. Okay, we're going to have to look at the eco queue and then the normal queue. So even for the eco queue, you've decked that out. Because most, most people don't think about doing something like that. All right, let's go in the normal queue. Gosh, this is beautiful. This almost feels like a science museum. And one thing I do notice right away is your queue is on a grid, which is so necessary to be able to fit a lot in the park. Four elements plus refining equals Vitalium. Oh, now that is a cool look and view. That's cool. Okay. So now we are here at the queue. As I said before, we're going to kind of go to the outside just a little bit to not constantly hop over people. So that's one thing I have a question about because I've seen this a lot with people recently is not actually putting those down at ground level to where they still see the roots. Me personally, I've always put it to where you can't see the roots. Is there a, um, did you like it more this way or do you feel, think that's how it's supposed to be? I've just always kind of wondered on that because I've always kind of felt like you pushed it down a little bit to where you don't see the roots. Um, but you know, to each their own, obviously. And here is once again, the other amazing building. So this is the refi refinery and Oh my gosh, this is brilliant. I was wondering, I'm like, okay, here's the entrance, but what is going on? Because you've got a longer station, but yet you've only got four cars, or maybe three cars on each train. <laughs> you decked out this area of the station that's not being used. And this fencing that automatically comes with it looks like you put that in there just to like as like a guest can't jump over on this part oh my gosh that's amazing that's absolutely incredible good job so it says convergence harvest process go through fire wind earth and water then refine um coaster or coach uh, i don't know what that says oh gosh oh i'm not gonna worry about it make fun um Scientist only, so not go through there because that's a door. So let's take a quick look at the stats. Let's see if it'll let me click on it without getting off of flip cam mode. There we go. So if we look at these stats on convergence, everything's all green, which is great. I think G-forces are a little bit high, and it's probably because of the air, this one area, as you can kind of see with the track highlighted, where there is just a mess of track. So it's probably in that area a little bit. Um, but everything else looks good and six inversions, six airtime hills. That is awesome. So let's go ahead and take a ride on the coaster.
I am just blown away by everything about this coaster. Um, I think, first of all, it was pretty smooth. Um, you know, with, with it being as compact as it was, I don't think this coaster type was designed to have this short of a car. Um, so some of the kind of quick movements might be, seem a little bit different just because it's a different track than what was, or different way than what the coaster was designed in game. But I mean, the beauty of it is just amazing. And the lighting, the layout is awesome. Like this would be such a fun coaster to go on in real life. Um, you know, maybe the vertical G's comes from that first turn because there's basically no banking there when it comes after this ma uh, really kind of pretty fast launch. Oh, look at that view. Wow, that's, oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. And then what I love about it is you've got the all the electricity that is converging or coming from these over here, which is coming from these solar panels. So it's like everything's coming from the natural energy that the park gets. So that's really, really cool. And another thing I wanted to look at here that I can't not point out is this awesome, awesome transfer track. So once again, just the level of detail is is second to none and, and what you're doing in this park. And you've really kind of stuck to your whole design and concept and idea for it, which is really cool. And the lighting, the triggers you have, just absolutely impressive. Absolutely impressive. So let's go ahead and get back into guest view. So now we are exiting the coaster. And this time now you get good views because before what's really kind of cool about this ride is you can't see anything about it before as you're kind of waiting in line for it. So it is like a total surprise. It almost feels like it's going to be a full on dark ride. So digital picture here. So that's where you get your picture. How did, what was he snapping a photo of? Oh, that's kind of cool. I guess maybe because of what you've got on the screen there. Okay, and then we come out here and exit back around. I love this fencing. This is awesome. Really, really cool. Lockers. Oh, nice. You're using suitcases to make it look like a locker door. That's a really cool touch, and it actually saves you on piece count. Because you've got the... Yeah, that is really cool. It definitely saves you a lot on piece count. That's a that's a really kind of cool idea to kind of give that look without using too many pieces. I'm going to have to take a picture of that and use that idea at some point. So sorry that I'll be stealing that from you. Man, the lighting here is just phenomenal at night. We'll have to make sure and look at an overview of night. I mean, that, uh, that merry-go-round looks great. But how you've done the lighting and the cues with those bulbs and stuff looks awesome so this next area we're going to look at at night as well because i kind of feel like it um it could be looked at either way but i feel like it looks really cool at night so once again another flat ride here there's the exit just the amount of detail you put into any type of queue is really impressive so we get some people out there maybe fishing looks like we got a little campsite over there or something we'll have to find our way back to that spot but wow, this is, oh, you can see convergence over there. I mean, that is definitely, ooh, what do we have over there? We'll have to look at that after this coaster. I think it's supposed to be part of this coaster. Really cool sign. Really, really cool. So, as I said before, I don't know if this is your first park. I know it's the first park that we're all getting to experience. But is this the first park you've made? Is this so like, dude, this is, this is crazy. I mean, these buildings are nice. Lighting's really good. We got a restroom over here. Good job putting the doors on the restroom like that. You got a nice statue kind of representing this water area. So, oh. That's a cool idea. 
So this would be like where you get water out of the water fountain. No, it's not really a water fountain. So this is where you put the water underneath and it refills your water bottle. That's genius. I'll need to come back in more detail and look and see how you made this. So it looks like the gable or gable panel right there or something. Um, you got a sign, you got a couple art shapes, and I just wonder what that piece is right there that's going to be squirting out the water. But that is, oh, that's brilliant. Brilliant, brilliant. So now we have the coaster, which is going to be in this boat rental building. And it looks like you got a little walkway down there for staff or it's a scan QR to enter. Okay, I love this, this part. This is just beautiful. Once again, lockers. I'm totally stealing that idea. Let's go ahead and go up to EcoQ. I like how you've got a generator right there. So got the warehouse, once again, nice protective fencing. And I like how you've got the protective fencing here for the coaster as well. Since you've got the walkway right over, you don't want anybody um, dumping drink on people on the ride or doing anything stupid. Even though people shouldn't do that anyways, you always want to make sure and prepare for the worst. So once again, really decked out queue. The whole area is really nice. So let's go ahead and take a ride on this Cascade Coaster. You know, that's not a super long coaster by any stretch of the imagination, especially for one of these water coasters, but I think it really fits in the area. It's not meant to do too much. It's meant to be more on probably the family variety, but the theming, once again, is really, really impressive. I mean, I feel like I'm just a broken record saying that over and over and over again. <laughs> um, that looks really cool. And then if we look over here, this would be, let's try to get this back to daytime try to do this without moving the HUD but it's not working so there we go yeah so this would be the water kind of filtration system for the park which is really really cool and it will make not just for the park for that ride um, I think that's a really cool touch you got this building back here with ways to get to the rooftop once again advertising for your company You've got like the solar panels up there. You got a couple of rooms with doors. Looks like an electric charging station. Nice. What piece is that? Oh, that's a whole piece. A fueling station, okay. So you see things every day. Oh, and this is like got a little solar thing on the truck is what it's probably supposed to be. And so we've got a couple picnic tables there. How about that? Boy, what about that view? Wow, let's get this back off the screen for a second. This might have to be the thumbnail right here. We'll see, though. Okay, so this is connected all the way back here to the solar panels and then this connects all the way so you got a gate there too if needed to enter as you can see the gates open and then this connects 
over here to the field, which then comes back all the way this way <laughs> and connects to the other field. I like how I've got the butterflies around. Like this experience is really cool. So this might be the backstage experience, that backstage tour that we were looking at. Yep, so there we go. So basically it takes you to essentially around the entire park in terms of how the employees get around and stuff. So that is just really cool. And that's that's a way that this was made using zero percentage on the counter because there's no pathing. It's just using, and it's a mixture of taking the rock terrain and grass terrain. And that is, that's awesome. Plus just kind of putting a lot of trees and stuff around it so that guests don't see it. So that's really cool. And here's kind of the overhead view of the area along with the overhead view of this area. And so well done. I'm just impressed with everything in this park. And we still got that area to look at. One thing I wanted to check out over here is I'm sure we're all interested. Oh, we've got this little spot here that's not even accessible. It's, it's there just for show. That's really cool. We got a little speed boat or sailboat. <laughs> Sponsored by Monsieur Fritz, and I forget how to pronounce that. Like I said, I'm so bad at pronouncing, it's kind of embarrassing, but um, let's see. And I'm a teacher, which is that's even more embarrassing. But my, my response to my kids all the time is I'm a math teacher, so I'm not, I'm not an English teacher. Oh, so you saved all as a blueprint, awesome. Okay, so I might have to save that. So, okay, so you put a vending machine in there. You put that, that sign. Obviously, you've got you get this sign right here. Those are just triangles. Okay, so we've got the aircon units. So you got, it looks like four aircon units, maybe. Turn different ways. Got an equipment box, okay. What about here on back? Okay, so that's the air con unit turned that way to kind of create that different look. And then I just want to know, what about the spout? Water refill outlet. not let me click on it oh my gosh it's a special effect of course of course and then every once in a while it's going to spit out a little bit of water all right dude i'm gonna have to use this in my part <laughs> i'm just gonna have to save that and uh that's insane that's amazing oh that is amazing i love it love it love it love it so last thing we need to look at is we can kind of see some boats out here is we need to look at this what looks like a resort area. So as you can see, this building is just so well done. It's really tough to make buildings like this in the game. Um, only thing I can say is the using kind of the pathing there. So as you can see, they kind of way step through it um so that part's gonna be a little bit of a issue but that's something that can be corrected wow so it's supposed to be like a where you rent your cabin and stuff it looks like gosh this is so amazing so cabin numbers we got a spa gym boat rental this way, you got 101 to 102. I was wondering if you'd put names on them. Like, I wanted to find Jasmine and I's cabin. <laughs> um, that's really cool. So here's going to be the spa. As you saw a picture of this in the opening shots of the park. We got a little play area, which is nice. Really good job. So this would be the village spa. Oops. This isn't the spa you're looking for. <laughs> Did it say there are 20 crows? 
So then we've got, man, this is incredible. So we got some more um, cabins. And they are copied and pasted in a way, um, but that doesn't matter because like most cabins are, right? It's just the layout here is just phenomenal. I wonder what you did for the gym. It's cabin 106. This makes me think of like the Friday 13th and like the cabins on the lake and not to all of a sudden, not to say this is creepy because it's not, but. <laughs> all right, so scan QR to enter. So I wonder what piece is that right there? Oh yeah, this is just emergency light, okay. So now if we look here, let's see. Let's find the gym and then we'll do an overhead look. Oh my gosh, you actually built weights. What? All right, we got to hop out of this mode so we can... Actually, we weren't in flip cam mode. I thought we were, but I guess we got out of it. So I have never seen anybody make weights in this game yet. Just using the bull bars there. Oh my gosh. So you could do like a couple different workouts, one where you take those and pull it into you, and this one where you work on your lats and your shoulders. You obviously got bench press. Um, I think that's supposed to be one of the, where you like pull the handles and stuff, or maybe like a bike, exercise bike. Oh my gosh. This is amazing. <laughs> you got a treadmill. And on the treadmill, you put the sensors with all the, oh my gosh. Dude, that's amazing. The only thing I'll say is we're looking at trees. We need to be looking at the water or something instead of looking at trees. Um, but look at, look at this building. And it looks like a leaf. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I'm speechless, man. And there's the layout of that, sp that spot. That is just... That's incredible. That might be one of the coolest... That might be the coolest building I've seen in this game. Period. Um, wow. Wow. Um, I mean, I don't know what else to say other than this park is insane absolutely insane and i love the realism aspect to it and i think you're working on a disney style park if i remember that correctly um, because i know you love disney and take a lot of inspiration from there so i just can't wait to see what you do but this is just insane man insane my friend um yeah and i love too how you just you you have all your backstage too you don't necessarily have backstage buildings but you do have some access backstage and you've really made it feel like it is within a, um, a small country town or the countryside of France. So that is really, really cool. And yeah, like, like I said, man, I'm just super impressed with this. Can't wait to see what else you do. And for anybody who hasn't seen this, make sure to go download on the workshop. It's on the PS5. Yeah, it's on the PS5, 89%. So you still have like 11% to work with if you needed to put something else in. But don't overdo it. I think this is perfect the way you have it. And like I said, I absolutely love it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to hit that like button. And I hope everybody has a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. See you later.